Hello, hello, grade 12. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabutiwa Sos Ugovela Wemet. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we have here. Okay, so we have question seven, still on financial maths. It says 7.1 at what annual percentage interest rate compounded quarterly? should a lump sum be invested in order for it to double in six years so note this a lump sum is an x amount so because we are not told but then this x amount here needs to be invested so that it doubles so if it doubles it will become two multiplied by the x amount and this must happen over a period of six years whereby uh, the interest is compounded quarterly. so what do we do now uh, obviously the formula that we have to apply is the compound formula because this is a lump sum just being invested and uh, left to stay in the bank for that six years so ma no monthly installments are made or no regular payments are made and then okay so we have our principal amount here being the lump sum x and then after six years we expect it to double so that's our accumulated amount 2x and then that's one plus the interest should be represented as i over 4 compounded quarterly but then this is for six years and how many quarters do we have in six years in a year we have four quarters so in six years that's six multiplied by four which is 24 so we put 24 here and then as you would do if there was a number here you divide by this x here both sides so the fact that now you have variables does not change your approach to solving math. You still follow the same approach in the same step. And then now, obviously here there will be a cancellation of this. And then allow me to just swap these ones so that I can make that the subject of the formula. And then it's equals to 2. To get rid of this 24, I will root 24 both sides. So root 24 both sides. And then this, I will have 1 plus i over 4 is equals to root uh, 24 and then 2. Now I take the 1 over to that side. That's i over 4 is equals to root uh, 24, 2, and then minus 1. You punch that into your calculator. It gives you, let's uh, quickly punch that into our calculator. So it gives us 0 0.0293, which you're going to cross multiply with this 4 to give you 0 0.1172 so note that i'm omitting some of the decimals and then only rounding off to four decimal places then multiply that by 100 and then now i have my percentage interest rate uh, it's 11.72 percent uh, rounded off to two decimal places so that's how you were supposed to go about solving that one so it was a giveaway of uh, five marks Okay, then we go to 7.2. It says, Simon buys furniture to the value of 10,000. He borrows the money on 1st February 2020 from a financial institution that charges interest rate, uh, interest at a rate of 9.5% per annum compounded monthly. He agrees to pay monthly installments of 450. The agreement of the loan allows him to pay equal monthly installments from the 1st of August 2020. But then now we know the rule of the bank is that when you take a or you take out a loan from any financial institution, you'll have to start paying from the month that follows. So what happens to all these months that it skips? We call those ones deferred payments, right? So if we have to represent this in a number line. Remember, I went to this financial institution on the 1st of Feb and then now Feb, March, April, May, June, July, and then we have August, whereby uh, according to this statement, we are told that he starts making the monthly installments on August. But then remember, he goes to the bank 1st of Feb. He is supposed to start paying off the loan a month after he, he has been granted the loan. So now this is a month after no payment. Second month, no payment. 
third month no payment fourth month no payment fifth month no payment and then on the sixth month that's where he makes the payment so now we want to say simon has five deferred payments simon has five deferred payments now the bank will not go oh simon did not have money for this five months so we're just gonna stop and not charge him anything we're just gonna let him start uh, from ten thousand by the time his the he, he begins to pay on august that's not how the bank works the bank says okay simon cannot pay for the first five months but then we are a business we're a bank and then we are supposed to charge interest on this uh, loan that he has taken so for the first five months which is what we are calculating at 7.2.1 calculate the total amount owing to the financial institution on 1st july 2020 which is on the fifth month after he has taken the loan so now the bank will say we have given him ten thousand, and then he has failed to pay us for the uh, following five months so we just want to take this ten thousand, and then charge interest that we agreed on which is 9.5 percent and then for a period of five months by the time he starts uh, to pay on august the money that he will now be owing the bank is 10,402.15 so now he's no longer owing 10,000 he has the money or the loan has now accumulated interest of 402.15 so by the time now he starts paying his present value um, amount or the value of the loan is now this one right so for two months that's what you were supposed to do okay then uh, 7.2.2 says how many months will it take simon to repay the loan how many months will it take simon to repay the loan and then obviously this is a loan so the formula that has to apply here uh, without any shade of doubt is obviously the present value formula remember uh, anything that says loan we have to solve it using the present value formula okay so but remember the present value from 7.2.1 we had already now calculated 10,402.15 one five right so this is now uh, the amount that he owes the bank and then uh, x amount that it takes out every month 450 and then one minus one plus the interest 0 0.095 over 12 to the exponent of negative n and then over 0 0.095 over 12 right now the first thing that you want to do is divide both sides by the number here so that's 450 i'm just going to divide both sides by 450 so if i divide this side by 450 obviously uh, the 450 will divide out here but then on this side here if i say 10 uh, 402.15 divided by 450 i end up with 23 point one one five nine now allow me to just immediately cross multiply with the value here so from the answer that i got from this one then i just immediately cross multiply that 0 0.095 over 12. so on the right hand side i'm now left with one minus one plus 0 0.095 over 12 to the exponent of negative n and then uh, this time around just going to try to make this one the subject of the formula so come over this side and you uh, go over to that side and then i'm not doing anything to the one here so i have positive one plus 0 0.095 over 12 to the exponent of negative n and then one minus uh, 23.1159 uh, bracket 0 0.095 over 12 like that okay so when you punch all this into your calculator so punch this we have a 1.0079 just gonna stick to four decimal places and then also here we have 0 0.8169 and then uh, let's apply our logs now so that's negative n and then log the base becomes this one 1 1.0079 and the upper block uh, we're going to put that number here so we already know the log that we should apply there from your calculator the log that has a block here and the block there 
whereby on the lower block you put the base this number and then on the upper block here you put the number here and then when you punch all that into your calculator you have negative 25.7008 right which if i divide both sides by negative one then my n is just approximately 26 right so approximately 26 months now from here you can tell that uh, if we are looking at this based on the payments that will be made the first 25 payments that are made are the full amount or the full installment of the 450 then the 0.7008a is indicating that a final payment will be made but then will not exactly be the 450 so it will be an amount that is less than the 450 so he's making a uh, 25 full payments but then the last payment on the 26 month is not a full payment so that's the meaning of all of this so it's not a matter of me having to round off no it's just a matter of saying that 25 full payments but then the final payment is not a, a full payment so it is just a those uh, that amount that is left off from the loan right after he's made all the full payments okay so now to write this one obviously we must say because remember even if that uh, payment is not a full payment but then it overlaps to the following month so which is why we are saying approximately 26 months right so note that okay then 7.2.3 says what is the balance of the loan immediately after simon has made uh, the 25th payment so having to go back here this is a, a question that i hinted previously uh, in passing on the or, or, or on the previous video that i made so whereby i said they will ask you to calculate the value of that last payment remember we said if this person makes 25 full payments simon but then the final payment is not a full payment that's why we are being asked to calculate the balance here so that's that final payment so now I need you to pay attention to this value here because that's what we're going to be using. So to calculate 7.2.3, we want to say uh, the total number of payments exactly made is 25.7008. But then in actual fact, there are 25 full payments. So 25 payments of the 450. And then this leaves us with 0 0.7008 so the number of payments made uh, after the first 25 payments have been made it's now 0 0.7008 so the remaining number of payments that need to be made after the 25th payment is only 0 0.7008 so that's how i end there and then we want to have to use our present value like that now on this one our x we still substitute here so note that when we calculate we are calculating this value not as a monthly installment but as the balance that will be left after it's made the payments so note that we are not calculating it as x because it's not a regular payment this is just a once-off payment that will be made as the last payment and not ever again so we can't calculate it as x we need to calculate it as our present value the money that will be remaining after all the 25 full payments have been made so we have one minus one plus zero point uh, zero nine five over 12 and then here we put the number of payments remaining so after the 25 full payments have been made how many number of payments are left only 0 0.7008 right and then you simply just punch all of that into your calculator so note that we still have this here as 0 0.095 over 12 and then punch all of this into your calculator your present value becomes 313.25 so again we can see that this uh, payment that is left is 
smaller than the monthly payments that is making. So outstanding balance OB is 313.25. Okay, so uh, that's it. With all that being said, guys, please press the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.